Good morning, everybody. How are you? Okay, that's good. I'm glad to have you here today on 6-8 Sunday. Some of you are going to wonder what that is, but maybe we'll find out as we sing through the hymns. Hint. I'm sorry. But uh, welcome. We're glad to have all of you here. We like to begin with a hymn. We're going to do that again this Sunday because why not? Let's stand up. And we'll begin and we'll sing our first hymn. job and we like it so much we're going to do another hymn and it's right right now here we go <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good to see everybody this morning. I'm glad that you're here. Uh, good morning to the live stream. We're 
Glad that you're with us as long as the internet is working. Oh, so so today. So um, uh, it might not work through the whole service. Uh, so if you're joining us later in the week because of that, we're glad you're here with us as well. Um, you know, internet stuff, like we do about everything that we can on our own. There's a lot of stuff we can't control. So uh, it's always everybody else's fault when the live stream isn't working. Uh, just, just, to, just to say. A <laughs> um, couple of announcements real quick. Uh, one is I want to just remind us of baby bottles. If you took a ba baby bottle for the Haven fundraiser and did not bring it back yet, uh, please bring it in. I saw one that came in already. That's great. Um, so if you could just get those in over the next couple of weeks so we can get those to Haven, that would be great. Even if, um, even if you uh, didn't get anything in it, that's fine. Just bring it back so we can return those to, uh, to Haven. A uh, couple other announcements that I want to mention. Uh, last week we talked about uh, doing the five-day club um, here in a few weeks in July. Uh, and so there's kind of like two main roles for you to be doing with that. The first is prayer, uh, praying uh, for this five-day club and that it will go well. And then uh, the second is inviting, uh, inviting children, uh, ages 5 to 12, right, Nancy? Um, and there are some, um, there's some paper um, invitations, registration forms in the back by the offering box. Uh, if you're, if you have somebody in mind or some different people in mind, take those, uh, tell them about it, share that with them. If you have any questions about that, uh, talk with Nancy. She will, uh, answer every question that you could ever have. Um, and, uh, and, but, um, yeah, so that's coming up here in, in a few weeks time, really, because June is over basically. Um, I don't know how this has happened, but it has. So, uh, we got, uh, we got a crazy, um, crazy few weeks of summer here coming up I think uh, we got people traveling we got different family situations that are going on and so forth and so um, let's just continue to pray for each other as well uh, along with just all of the things that are that are going on um, <clears throat> one um, somebody's in the 4th of July mode um, early don't know what that's about uh, so um, uh, We've been doing this for a while now, but there's uh, some kind of adaptation that needs to happen. So as you know, um, we'll ask you to sign birthday cards uh, in, in the back for the birthday gifts that we've been doing with Mount Prospect. Uh, Michelle, where did Michelle go? Michelle, there you are. Uh, Michelle has been kind of like leading that and doing all of the uh, purchasing of the gifts um, for that with some changes with work schedule and so forth and so on that are coming up. Uh, we would like to get more people involved in uh, going out and purchasing the gifts and so forth. Um, so as it turns out, uh, July, there are 10 birthdays. Um, now we partner with another church, so we're not doing all 10 ourselves, but uh, this is the most that we've ever had. Um, <laughs> Previous, I think, like, four was the most that we had had, maybe five, but never ten. So, um, so that would be a lot for, for Michelle to have to, to, have to do. So, um, so we're just going to start here with this. If you're interested in this, um, talk with Michelle. What, what happens is that there's um, ideas for gifts that are sent in. So it's not like you're going out and having to figure everything out yourself and so forth. Um, and there's um, reimbursement as well, and there is a spending limit that we that we have. So there's there's a lot of different variables, but we would like to see more people get involved with this. So um, talk with Michelle, talk with me. I'll send you to Michelle, um, and uh, so just let's. We'd love to just get a team of people involved in doing this. All right. So uh, and today there are uh, three three cards uh, in the back to to sign. Um, when when you're heading out later today so please be sure to just put your name a little message uh, at least your name on there um okay and the last thing i want to mention is uh, operation christmas child with the sunglasses uh we've had a good good amount of those coming in and so thank you for that uh we're about halfway there to what we need so uh, if you could be looking for um children's sunglasses and bringing those in putting them in the box in the entryway that would be fantastic 
Uh, all right, I think that's I think that's all. A lot, not too many announcements, but still kind of a lot of information to take in. As always, any questions, please come and talk with me, and we'll we'll try to get some answers. Let me pray for us, and then we'll get to the rest of the music. So uh, join me in prayer, please. Heavenly Father, thank you for uh, today and um, just the the beautiful sunshine that we have this morning. Um, and uh, we, we're just thankful that we are able to be here uh, again today, um, gathering with, with one another and, and to be with you. And so, um, Father, encourage us, help us. Um, there's a lot going on. There's so many different things that are happening in all of our lives. Um, so, uh, so, Father, um, help us to be tuned in to, to your message today, to what you're going to be speaking to us through the Holy Spirit um, and, and what that will mean for, for our week ahead of us. Uh, and so now, uh, strengthen our voices and help us as we, as we spend some time praising you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for being here today. We are so happy to see you all. We have a few songs planned for you today, so please, if you would, stand up and join us worshiping our Lord. are all energized after singing that song. Our next song is In Christ Alone. And as you sing this song, just think about how God is always with us. It says in the Bible, I will never leave you. So remember, he is our light. He is our strength. And whenever we need him, we can look to him and God will be there willing to help us.
Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. and close your eyes for just a second as we pray. Dear God, thank you so much for this beautiful day that you have given us, Lord. Thank you because we are all here to praise and worship you. Lord, as we sing our last song, please help us to set our hearts and our thoughts on you, Lord. Please help us to be open to the Holy Spirit, to hear what you have to say to us, Lord. And please, as we go out today, help us to spread your peace, Lord, and your love, and help people to see you through us. In your name we pray. Amen.
much for singing with us today. You may take a seat. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for singing. Thanks to our all of our music team today. Um, appreciate all the work that everybody puts in and always enjoy uh, hearing your voices as we sing together. Uh, let's, uh, let's have a word of prayer uh, this morning before we uh, have the message. So join me in prayer, please. Heavenly Father, um, Lord, we just thank you for the gift of music and of song and being able to worship you in that way. And uh, what, a, what, a gift, uh, what a gift it is. And, um, Father, as we um, spend some time uh, with your word this morning and um, just um, having the rest of the service, I, I again just ask that you uh, prepare us for what you are doing. Um, 
help us to help us to be able to um, pay attention to uh, to you being active in this region and and are you calling us into into doing something into helping something into uh, reaching out to someone uh, what it, whatever it is that you're up to father because we we know you you are up to something here um, Help us to pay attention to that, to be aware of it, and, and to be ready then when, when you move us into whatever it is that you have for us as, as a church or as, as individuals. Um, so, Father, we, um, we just open ourselves up to you and to your will and to your way. Um, help us to not be distracted away from, from you and from what you're doing how you're doing it, but help us to really um, focus in um, and to be filled with just the love and joy and peace and the goodness and the kindness um, that, that is from you and, and help us to extend all of that fruit of the Spirit out into our families, into our work, into our just lives uh, in in this place, and in the hopes that um, it will be of encouragement and help to those who are um, who are suffering. Uh, and Father, we also uh, just uh, think of our international workers and all around the world, and we pray that you encourage them and help them, and um, and also, Father, uh, help us to. Um, to see what you're doing elsewhere and, and how we can be involved in that as well. Father, you are, you are God and you are God alone. And there's no one better. And so we, we worship you, we praise you, and we thank you for saving us, for loving us, for allowing us to be here. In Jesus' name, amen. In the first age... There was a garden. In the garden, the trees grew well. There was stunning light that was never harsh. It was never hard on the eyes. It was warm and pleasing simply because it was perfect light. There was lavender and sage, and their scent floated in the gentle breeze. Oaks and maples and pines, roses and lady slippers and columbine, they all grew with many more. The garden was wild, yet peaceful and purposeful. Birds, critters, and animals, they lived and delighted in the garden. There were two other creatures in this garden, father and mother. And they called this place Eden. And it was indeed a paradise. It was good, and all was good. Until one fateful day when a choice was made. A father and mother, they were different from everything else in the garden, but they did not create the garden. There was another who had created the garden and everything in it, including father and mother, made from the dust, but given a breath of air, that was different from the air in the garden. This creator, in his garden, had set a boundary. But father and mother broke this boundary. They desired to go past the boundary. And as they did... Everything changed 
for the worse. What was good and orderly and perfect, Eden, was now disorderly and chaotic. Creator closed the garden because of the boundary breaking and sent the first two out into the unknown. The Creator, in essence, is kind and merciful. And before He sent them out, He clothed them. And He sent them out on a specific path, a specific path that He had prepared. And along this path where He knew that they would be walking, He had planted one special tree sapling. And He purposefully was going to send them out into the unknown past this special tree sapling that he had planted. Sad, fearful, distraught. Father and mother walked down the path to leave. As they did, through tears, mother saw the special sapling beside the path. And wanting to have a piece of the garden with her into the unknown, she bent down, carefully removed the sapling, some of the soil, and planted it in a small tray that she had with her. And they walked out. Father and mother left the garden and walked into harsh, unreliable light and dangerous, destructive wind. There were similarities to the garden, but it was all very different. Father and mother eventually entered into a dwelling, a house with many rooms, but it was dark. It was a dark place. It was a cold place. It was a barren place. It was a depleted place. Mother took the small sapling in the tray And she set it on a table in a room. And beside it, she lit a small lamp. And the young tree just stayed right there. Father and mother had many children. And room after room in this house was filled. Centuries passed. And most of the children disregarded the small lamp and the tree in the corner. What most missed, because they dismissed that the tree even existed, is that over the centuries, as the tree sat there, it grew. It grew and it grew and it grew, inch by inch. But it never stopped growing. Its branches spread far and wide. And fruits grew on each branch in that cold, dark house. The fruit tree was gentle and mostly silent. If one listened very closely, they could hear the tree singing in a quiet, soothing voice. Some could hear the song, and they were drawn to it, and they would move closer and closer to the tree. This tree was very different from some of the children that were in the house. 
they were loud and brash. They sang songs about themselves and forced everyone to sing along. And anyone who wouldn't sing would be trampled and destroyed. Many children loved those loud songs and they would join in, but the result was always the same. One room would war against another. War always broke out from the competing songs. And it was ugly, and it was dark, and a deepening sadness grew with each new war. There was this one young child. She grew weary of the wars. She detested the smells of the rooms as she would walk by them and the smell would waft over her. She, she detested the smell of, of war and death and decay. She went for a walk in the house. And one day, as she was walking down a hallway, she heard the gentle song that was being sung. She smelled beautiful smells that she never smelled before, but she'd heard a story about the smells. It was lavender and sage. It was all very real, but very dreamlike at the same time. She finally looked and gazed upon that tree. She didn't see war. Instead, she saw flowers and beauty. She heard the song. She smelled different smells. She was just drawn closer and closer. And before she even knew what was going on, she had climbed up into the branches of the tree. And as she sat there, she was surrounded by fruits. And all of a sudden, she was surrounded by other children that she had never seen before. There was joy. Peace. Inside of the canopy of this tree, there was light. Light that she had never seen before. And she just looked all throughout the canopy of this tree, and she began to think of a story that she had heard long ago about something called a garden. An Eden. She'd never seen it before, only in stories. But now, all of a sudden, she was there, seeing it, experiencing it. One of the other children that was on the branch with her plucked a fruit from the branch and handed it to the young girl. And as she handed it to her, she said, This is for you. Take and eat. You will shine bright and live. She ate the fruit. And in that moment, peace and joy overwhelmed her. Light filled her to overflowing. And as she sat on the branch, changed. She looked out into the darkness that was still there, the darkness of the house. She began to wish that all of the children at war singing their songs, that they would stop, that they would come to the tree, and that they would eat the fruit and live and shine bright. And as she was looking and thinking of all this, she saw one of her friends walking by in the darkness. 
She called out to her, but she couldn't hear her. The, the darkness was too deep. The darkness was too dense. The darkness was too thick. So in desperation, because she wanted her friend to be in the tree with her, she, she grabbed one of the fruit off of the branches and she, she just threw it. She threw it at her friend, hoping that her friend would grab it and, and eat it. But instead, the fruit hit the friend in the head, in the darkness. And the friend had no idea what was, what was going on. She couldn't see the tree. She couldn't see her friend. She didn't know what was going on. All of a sudden, she looked down. She saw this piece of fruit that had hit her in the head, laying on the ground. Not knowing what happened, she picked up the fruit. And she cursed it. And she hated it. She didn't know that it came from a tree. She didn't know anything about it. And so she cursed it again and she just threw it away into the darkness. The girl in the tree was distraught at this. She contemplated many questions. And as she did, there was this voice. That just gently answered every question. The girl was frightened, though, in part, because what the voice was telling her was frightening. She found herself saying out loud to the tree, I don't want to go back into the darkness. I don't want to leave this place. I don't want to leave this Eden. I don't want to go back to those rooms of death. I want to stay here with you. And the voice said again, Go and tell. I'm with you. There will be light. With trust and courage, she plucked another fruit. And she jumped down into the dark house. And she began running, seeking out this friend. She was looking for her friend, searching and searching and searching. And as she ran deeper into the darkness, to her astonishment, at one point she looked back and what she saw behind her was a pathway of light that led back directly to the tree. And the light was overflowing out of her and so as she entered into the darkness, the light indeed was with her. She was glowing. She carried the scent of lavender and sage into the war-torn stench. She eventually found her friend. Her friend was in a room singing a song and at war. She grabbed her friend, brought her into the hallway and extended a hand with the fruit. She said to her friend, this is for you. Take and eat. You will shine bright and live. This time, the friend ate the fruit. And they walked the lit pathway back to the tree. More and more children in that house were drawn to the tree. And more and more light began to fill the dark house. War continued and raged on. 
But the tree remained. And so did the light. New rooms were made in the branches of the tree. And there was always enough fruit for all the children that were drawn to the tree. And the singing from the tree continues. Even to this very day. Even in this very room. Now, if you're not familiar with me, you might be thinking, well, that was a little weird, preacher, <laughs> right? A little bit different from what I'm used to. If you are familiar with me, you might be thinking, well, that was a little different, preacher. <laughs> a little bit different from what I'm used to. A little bit, a little bit bizarre. Yes, uh, that is true. We like to dip our toes into the bizarre from time to time. It's a metaphor, it's a parable, it's a story. It's an illustration. And an important reminder about illustration and metaphor before we go on. Illustrations, metaphors are always imperfect. They will never be perfect. They will fall apart at some point. Or there'll be certain details that are added in that extend a part of the story, a part of the truth, part of the point, uh, but you won't find them in the text themselves, right? At some point, you could end up saying, well, that doesn't work because about the illustration or the metaphor, and that is correct, right? Uh, but it doesn't mean that the whole illustration or metaphor has to be thrown out, right? We use them to take what we can from them, but we don't expect them to be perfect all the way through, all right? So that's really important to, to remember and, and to think through, all right? So then a question could be asked, well, why use them, right? Why tell truth from Scripture in this different way, right? And I say to get us thinking about things differently, right? Uh, to shake us up a little bit. We can become so familiar with a story that, in that familiarity, we never think about another pathway. We never, uh, we, we start to miss, like, truth. Um, you, you can experiment with this. Think of a Bible story that you know extremely well and tell it to somebody, right? And then go and read it and see how you did in the telling, right? A lot of times we miss something or we forget something or we'll add things and so forth, right? Um, so, Sometimes we need to be shaken up or, um, you know, those different details that we've, we've forgotten. Have you ever, maybe you've experienced this or maybe you've uh, heard someone say uh, they're looking for something, right? And they can't find it. And somebody else will find it. And they say, I walked right past that and I never saw it, <laughs> right? Um, or we're driving down the road and we're looking for a certain place. It's like, oh, we just passed it. I never saw it, right? We do this all the time in life. Uh, we do it with Scripture as well, right? So we need to be shaken up to force us back into Scripture to be like, oh, yeah, that's what's there, <laughs> right? Uh, or to shake us up to think through, like, oh, I've never thought about this story in this way. Is there a truth that is important for us with this story from, from that, right? So this is, um, this is one reason why we need artists and poets and creative people because uh, they do things that help us see something familiar in a deeper way, All right? Uh, so so it, we, we want to try to engage with some things in, in a deeper way, in a different way sometimes, to have it be made new to us or the appreciation to go deeper. We think about a, a line through Scripture that we haven't, thought about before. So today, with that story, we went from the Garden of Eden to the Great Commission. That was the line that we did. The Garden of Eden to the Great Commission, right? Um, and hopefully, it engaged our imaginations. Um, I, I firmly believe that as, as Christians, we need to have engaged imaginations as we interact with Scripture, as we interact with God. Our God 
is the most imaginative being ever. Right? Look at the created order. Look at all of the imagination that is here from his mind. Right? It's truly incredible. And so we, we have the ability uh, to tap into that as well. Uh, so what I want to do with our time left is just uh, engage with you with a couple of things that come to mind for me from that telling. Um, you won't find that anywhere else. I wrote that all myself, all right? Um, so, so if you hated it, that's all on me, all right? Um, but it, it got me thinking through some, some different things, and so I want to share those with you. What is the Holy Spirit impressing on you, right? And so with these, follow those lines that the Holy Spirit is going to give to you as well, all right? So here's, uh, here's the first thing for me. Adam and Eve, father and mother, in the Garden of Eden, had all of the knowledge, doctrine, if you will, they needed in that place. Adam and Eve had knowledge beyond what we can possibly imagine. Adam and Eve walked with God in the garden. (laughs) Right? That's stunning. Adam and Eve had all of the knowledge, all of the doctrine. They, they didn't need any more knowledge about God. Yet, they still chose themselves instead of God. Because the knowledge couldn't defeat their desire. They had all the knowledge that they could need. Their desire was more powerful. Where your treasure is, there your heart is. Where your desire is, your life will be. What do you desire? Who do you desire? Right? You can memorize Genesis to Revelation and, and say it every day and it do no good. If your desire is not for Jesus, if your desire is not for God. Right? Do we need knowledge? Yes. But what is our desire as Christ followers in this place, in this time that we're living? Right? So ultimately, knowledge wasn't the issue in the Garden of Eden. Desire was. My second thought, Uh, working through this, thinking through this, I also thought about King Nebuchadnezzar. Um, If you have a Bible and you want to look for this, we're going to hear a couple sections from Daniel chapter 4. All right, so you can start looking for that. We'll get there here in a couple of minutes. Um, But just thinking through all of this led me to be uh, thinking about, um, about King Nebuchadnezzar. And, um, if you're if you're familiar with the story, then then you'll know some of this. We're not gonna I'm not gonna um, tell tell the story here, but um, but go and go and read it uh, for your uh, for your own if if you can and, and become familiar with it or refamiliarize with it. Um, but in a sense, what was King Nebuchadnezzar doing? He was forcing others to sing his song, right? He was like, here's my song, you have to sing it. And if you did not sing his song, what did he say? You will be dead. <laughs> right? That's the option. Sing my song or death. Right? So he forced others to sing his song, to worship his image. He set up a massive idol and he said, worship it or die. Right? Uh, he tried to destroy them. Nebuchadnezzar was an incredible, incredible king, incredible man, um, right? But he was, he was warlike for his own song, for his own image, right? And I'm thinking of that because I think that's what we're doing still today. We are following the path of King Nebuchadnezzar. We as a society are acting like 
King Nebuchadnezzar. As individuals, we act like King Nebuchadnezzar. When others don't sing our song, what do we try to do? Destroy them. We will destroy them, right? You don't, you don't belong here. Um, metaphorically, we, we will try to destroy them, right? Um, with, with that thought, I, I read a, a Kenyan proverb this week as well, so, and it fit with all of this, right? So here's the proverb. When a man is stung by a bee, he wants to destroy the whole hive. Right? When a man is stung by a bee, he wants to destroy the whole hive. Isn't that true? Right? I have been stung by a bee. Right? Nuclear war ensues. Right? Chemicals in cans. Right? 20-foot spray radius. Right? Gloves, hats, wait for cool tents for what I go to war. Right? How dare you sting me? Right? I will teach not only you a lesson, I will teach your whole group. You will cease to exist. Right? Don't we do this? Right? In those moments, what are we becoming? Are we becoming more human to be more human is we are made in the image of God right okay in those moments we're not becoming more human we were becoming more beast like right same as Nebuchadnezzar Daniel 4 beginning in verse 28 uh, there were all these dreams that were going on all this kind of crazy stuff that was happening leading up to this again please read it for yourself um, to get the full story, all this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. And at the end of 12 months, he was walking on the roof of the royal palace of Babylon. As, as, you, as you hear this language about roof of Babylon and Nebuchadnezzar walking on it, I want you to think about you and your life. The roof represents our lives, and we're walking around on top of our lives, all right? And Nebuchadnezzar is on this roof, this royal palace, and he's speaking. And he says, Is not this great Babylon, which I have built by my mighty power as a royal residence and for the glory of my majesty? You hear what he's saying? I am so glorious. I am so majestic. I have built this city. I'm guessing he didn't lay too many bricks. You see it? While the words, verse 31, were still in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken. The kingdom has departed from you, and you shall be driven from among men, and your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. And you shall be made to eat grass like an ox, and seven periods of time shall pass over you until you know that the Most High rules the kingdom of men and gives it to whom he will. Immediately, the word was fulfilled against Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from among men and ate grass like an ox, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hair grew as long as eagle's feathers, and his nails were like bird's claws the glory of his majesty ultimately ends up making him like a beast right? humanity is created in the image of God we have been filled with different air but because of sin we have moved into a dark house with no light. And we become more beastly. The further away from God we go, the less like Him we are. The scent of flowers fades in the deepening dark. Last thing for today. 
And it's connected with the knowledge thing, that knowledge alone um, is not enough. Um, the, the girls had a, had a, had a ballet recital um, last Saturday. I was taking photographs of it. Uh, some of the photographs don't, didn't turn out the way I had hoped, but I still like them because they have this very peculiar kind of aspect to them. And so then I come across this photographer that I did not know about. I knew some of his photographs, but I didn't really know him. And it turns out he would take photographs like the one I took at the ballet recital. Oh. I mean, he did it on purpose. I did it by accident. But hey, we're not going to get into the details of it, right? Okay. So now he's like my, my, one of my favorite photographers. Right? Um, so I'm reading about him and, and all this kind of stuff. And I see this quote from him. Now, I don't know his beliefs. I don't think he was a Christian. This, so it's, it's not inside of Christianity. But it exudes it. All right? Here's what he said. One does not think joy. One is carried by it. One does not think joy. One is carried. My fear is that we have fallen into a trap of trying to define joy, define God, explain being a Christian. Knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. We need knowledge, yes. There's some aspects of that, yes, of course. But have we gone too far? When we should be climbing the branches of the tree. Getting the fruit and saying, this is for you. Take and eat. You will shine bright and live. Isn't it good? It's because of Jesus. Because Jesus is the tree. Climb into Jesus and eat that fruit. We can't define that. We can't even really put knowledge to it. It's beyond that. I think we have joy all wrong. We think of joy in terms of consumption and accumulation when joy is God himself. The world is like a house with many rooms at war. It's perishing. But Jesus, the tree of life, has his branches extending out in every direction. And there is more than enough room, and there is more than enough fruit. The knowledge will come in time. But we find peace and joy in being carried by Jesus. To the surprise of everyone, King Nebuchadnezzar eventually wrote another hit single. <laughs> and we would do well to remember it. Daniel 4, verse 34. At the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven, and my reason returned to me. And I blessed the Most High and praised and honored him who lives forever. For his dominion is an everlasting dominion. And his kingdom endures from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are counted as nothing. And he does according to his will among the host of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say to him, what have you done? At the same time, my reason returned to me, and for the glory of my kingdom, my majesty and splendor returned to me. My counselors and my lords sought me, and I was established in my kingdom, and still more greatness was added to me. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of heaven, for all his works are right, 
and his ways are just, and those who walk in pride, he is able to humble. Let's pray. Father, um, probably more than what we would like to admit, we are like Nebuchadnezzar, walking around on the rooftop of, of a self-made palace, thinking how grand we are, how amazing we are. Look at what we've done. Look at what we've built. Aren't we good? Aren't we great? And what we miss is that through that we are, we are more like the beast's like the male lion that will destroy the cubs of another. In the hopes of his own following after him. We are so quick to destroy, so quick to sing our own songs. And yet, Father, it seems more and more that, to me at least, that you're calling us to be like, like giggling, delighted children climbing up into a tree and sitting in the branches. Just amazed at the wonder of sitting on a branch, looking around hearing the birds, smelling the smells. Father, make us like the children. And less like beastly Nebuchadnezzar. Help us to sing that second song more than the first. And help us to remember that as you send us out a pathway of light it's always connected to you and never broken because of that promise from our King Jesus I am with you always go and tell go and live go and show Share the fruit. I am always with you. That promise, Father, changes everything. And so help us to believe it. Help us to remember it. Fill us with light to overflowing. So that those who don't know you, who are lost in the darkness, will have a chance Eat that fruit, the fruit of life, to shine bright themselves and to live. Help us, Father, on our own. We will never do it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Would you all please stand and join us as we sing one more song?
before you all know that I'm a bit of a music fanatic so I have another bit of lyrics for you all and today's lyrics are from for King and Country they have a beautiful song called steady and it says you keep me steady when the sky is falling and I'll keep steady after you I'll carry on when my strength is failing take heart cuz you're with me so let the stars drop whatever comes I'll be ready you keep me steady there is so much going on in our world today. You might have heard about the submersible being lost at sea and so many other things going on. But the Bible says in Isaiah 40, verse 28 and 29, Have you not known, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. As you go out today, remember that God is always with you. He will keep you steady, and he will give you the strength to continue to live the way that he wants us to live. Go out in peace. <laughs> 